Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, Investment Strategy Analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Don Rissmiller. Don is Chief Economist and Partner at Strategus, and we're going to be talking all things Fed in the markets today. Don, how are you doing? Very good, Ross. Good morning. Good to talk with you. Good to chat with you as well, and it's fortuitous to have you today. Um, it, it, we're recording on a Thursday. There was a Fed meeting yesterday where they raised interest rates, although at a slower pace than they had been raising. Um, a lot of potential takeaways, but the market um, kind of rallied into the close and seemed to take a, a bit of a dovish takeaway from Fed Chair Powell's press conference. I, I want to turn it over to you and basically say, what are your big picture takeaways from the meeting, from the statement and press conference, and then maybe from the market's reaction as well? Sure, absolutely. So I think the market is trying to figure out what exactly a Fed pivot is. So clearly they've slowed down rate hikes. That's some sort of pivot. Also, they're getting closer to a pause. And if they get the Fed funds rate to 5% or a little above, it makes a lot of sense to pause there because rate hikes act with a lag that will affect the economy for the rest of this year, probably into next year. So we're getting close to a pause. But the market also is starting to price in rate cuts. And that makes sense if you look historically after the Fed raises rates aggressively often, they will break something and they will have to cut. The Fed here, though, and I think Powell's message was they're not so sure about that. So slow down, yes. Pause, most likely, yes. But cuts still are to be determined. And if the market's going to be offsides, I think it would be on the expectations of cuts as the year develops. We just have to watch inflation and that data a little bit longer to gain some confidence. That makes a lot of sense. And I think the Fed, as you've noted, and as we've pointed out, is really, really focused on the labor market from here. And we've gotten some labor market data this week, including job openings uh, back up above or, or at 11 million, which is, you know, close to a cycle high. Um, initial claims for unemployment insurance ticking down to, to kind of a historic low. Um, so the labor market remains really quite tight. And that's a problem for the Fed who wants wage growth to come down a bit. What are you seeing on the labor market front? And, and is that the indicator to watch going forward to try and get at what the Fed is doing? I think it is the indicator to watch. And it matters because it ties so closely with core services inflation. And in particular, the, the core service number X housing that the Fed has focused on here. So the tight labor market generates wage gains. Those wage gains flow into the service part of the pricing structure. And so we are still looking at a quite tight labor market. There are parts of the economy that have shown some cracks. Uh, if, if we look at the housing market, that has weakened. If we look at the manufacturing data, we got the PMI this week, that has started to weaken. But the labor market generally has been quite tight and we're just starting to see some, some early evidence of, of slowing, but not the negative numbers that would tell us we're opening up significant slack just yet. And so until the labor market weakens, until we open up some slack, we're going to be fearing that wage price spiral that probably is not happening right now, but the threat of it is the biggest it's been in about 40 years. And that's what's creating continued discomfort on the part of the central bank. Right. And, and so you've painted a picture of, of what is a pretty kind of confusing and complex economy where strength in the labor market and resilience from the consumer sector kind of balance against uh, weakness in housing, a weakening manufacturing sector. Um, you all have had a kind of a 50% odds of recession in the next year as your base case. Is that still your base case? And if we were to enter a recession, you know, what sort do you think it would be? I think there's a lot of hope that it would be a, a, of the milder variety given the, the position of the labor market, but I'm curious what your thoughts are there. Absolutely. So that's still the base case. There's a time element to this as well. So it's a 50% chance of recession in the next year and a 75% chance of recession over the next two years, simply because until the labor market gets into a better state, we're looking at a Fed that's going to remain restrictive and probably sufficiently restrictive as we go forward. Uh, and so until we remove that threat, there has to be an elevated odds of a, of a downturn. So the time element of this matters, but we're not in recession right now, as best we can tell by 
the GDP data and uh, other indicators. And so that part uh, is still the same. But when we take a step back, it's really uh, the resolution to this threat that has to come from the Fed being comfortable. And that, to circle back on the original point, is what I believe the most important pivot is. Pivot is the Fed saying mission accomplished. Pivot is the Fed declaring victory and say now we don't have to have a restrictive Fed funds rate. We can just have a neutral Fed funds rate. And to make that determination, we have to be confident that inflation will not re-accelerate. So it is coming down. That's a good thing. It probably continues to come down when we look at the CPI. But we have to be confident as soon as we take our foot off the brake, we don't get some sort of re-acceleration. Right. And I think that's that's important to keep you know, front of mind is that really it still is an inflation story first and foremost, and everything else kind of comes secondary. So Don, this has been a really informative kind of walk through the economy at a, at a really interesting moment uh, for the U.S. economy. So I want to thank you for your time. Um, I would also encourage everyone to go check out Don's article in the most recent Bear Digest on inflation and the state of the economy, which I think is really excellent. Um, so Don, thanks again and hope to talk soon. Thanks. Take care.